Hello, hello, hello. What's up, guys? Can you see my... Um, is everything all good on the other end? What's up, Ali? Say check. YouTube update. Say check. Okay, what's that mean? What's up, Ali? How you doing? Is anyone else on the chat? Say hi in the comment section if you're there. Um, just let, let me know that you're there. Let me see what's going on. What's up, Ewan? How you doing? What's up, what's up, what's up? Who else is here? What's up, Ewan? What's up, Ali? Okay, I'm going to get started. Anyway, it's Any, aka The Not Trader, your friendly neighbor swing trader, back again with another live stream. Um, today, I'm going to cover... Yo, Demola, what's up? Today, I'm going to cover a couple of things going on in the market. It's going to be quite a fundamentals-heavy... Um, discussion today um, primarily because I haven't really looked at many stocks outside of the ones that I've covered in my technical analysis videos over the last week the same um, the same equities and the same yeah so the same indices that I've been following you know the DAX the Dow Jones and the same stocks primarily gold and oil I've been watching uh, for two specific reasons I'll show you that now Actually, before I get started, let's let's go around the room, guys. Oh, we've got Jet Life, newbie here, newbie in the room. Um, yes, there is slight, a slight delay, um, so you might uh, be experiencing a slight delay. So, um, uh, But still comment in the comment section, and I'll, I'm reading the comments, and whatever you guys say, I'm going to try and uh, incorporate in the video. But yeah, uh, put in the chat section what, what stocks you guys are looking at for this week, uh, or even this month. Um, and yeah, let's let's get started. So I'm going to start with gold. The reason I'm going to start with gold is that some interesting news came out about. Actually, let me start with gold. Where's that? So gold, Bloomberg. Some interesting news came out about gold um, that I didn't really know before. Someone actually sent this to me uh, via one of the 
a WhatsApp groups that I'm in um, called Stock Pickers Association, run by Debordon. Um, I got a got a, a podcast with him coming in a couple of weeks, but um, yeah. So gold squeeze supply should ease as Swiss refineries reopen. So I didn't know about this, but um, it says the supply shortage in the gold market will likely ease in the coming weeks as Swiss refineries start running up, running again. So um, yeah, let me carry on reading. Three major plants in the Swiss canton of Tissino, Europe's biggest gold refining hub, has said they've received permission from local authorities to run their facilities at a limited rate. So even though this, um, the the um, bug that shall not be named, the the beer bug, as uh, Zip Trader calls it, yeah, even though the beer bug is uh, in full effect, they've they've the Swiss authorities have given them permission to open this um, the refining hub. So I think that's what was some of the reason why there was a shortage of gold, which saw the prices of gold kind of go up a little bit. Humphrey, what's up? What's up? How you doing? So, um, so some of these fundamental issues might be part of why there's. Um, I never thought of why maybe people are trying to invest in gold because even though I trade gold sometimes. Gold is a physical product. Sometimes you get so caught up in the numbers and the charts that you forget that the, some of these these commodities are actual physical products. And if there's a shortage of them, if there's actual shortage of gold bullions that people are actually trying to invest in, then the price is going to go up. So, um, but it looks like this price might ease now that some of these refineries are starting to open up again, which allows people to have access to um, to gold if they want to invest in it. And I can see people investing in gold more as. Um, as this recession continues and this um, this lockdown continues, because um, as we know, gold is seen as a safe haven for um, for maintaining the value of your assets when um, the the equities market is 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 in a recession. They they're normally inversely correlated, gold and equities. So um, yeah, that, that was just an interesting article. I said ch challenging times. It be it, it's been a turbulent month for gold. Yeah, so gold spiked up. From about fifteen hundred to sixteen hundred in in the space of a couple of in a couple of days, maybe two weeks, um, and then the article just goes on to talk, talk a little bit more about gold. I just thought it was an interesting article to read about gold, and um, let me tie it back to the charts, because you know we're a technical analysis channel. Got we'll always tie it back to charts. Hey, hello newbie here, here as well. Should we drop swing trading for a couple of months and switch to day trading? Seems like most patterns do not apply anymore. That's a very good question. Let me finish this gold while well, I was talking about gold and then I'll answer that. Um, yeah, that's a very good question. Um, as a swing trader, you need to be very adaptable to the market. Your strategy is not going to work all the time. And I've, I've learned this, that if you're too rigid with your strategy, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause more harm than good because we're in very volatile times and volatility is the is what we need as swing traders to make profit but it can also be a double-edged sword and if if markets are too volatile and and patterns aren't behaving in the way they normally do then you need to make um re uh, readjust your strategy to to accommodate the situation you're in so and with that being said i do think i actually agree with you that i do think you need to maybe Instead of looking to hold for a month or even a couple of months or even a couple of weeks, sometimes you might want to shorten the time frame in which you hold your positions as a swing trader to accommodate the the the, the market volatility. Because I just I personally don't feel comfortable right now, given what where we are, to hold a position for two three weeks because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if if the lockdown is going to be lifted. Why well, that's going to be lifted in two three weeks? But there's so many variables going on right now. But I've been I've been taking shorter trades as you can as you guys have probably realized. In the um, in some of my trades that I've made, I've, I've been planning for shorter positions just because um, just because the market's so volatile right now, and I just wouldn't feel comfortable being in a long term hold. Well, not long term, but long term in terms of the fact that I'm a swing trader. So long term to me is like a month and a half or something. I just don't feel comfortable um, on in a long term hold um, given the situation in the market right now. And so yeah. Uh, it, uh, G tub full. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. I won't go as far as say to switch to day trading because, okay, let me explain a little bit further. Day trading, you can day trade. I day trade as well, but it's because I, I have different strategy that I employ with day trading than I do with swing trading. But I still kind of, um, I will look at the short time frames for some idea as to what what I want to do. But it won't be where my decisions are made. It's no normally. When I go down to the 15, the 30 minute, the 15 minute chart, whatever, that's normally so that I can execute the perfect entry into a trade. But the decisions that I make are normally still made on the four hour chart or the daily chart. 
Um, so, for example, I keep going on about this, but I, I told you my theory on um, on the DAX or on the equities market in general was that it was going to sell off because I think it's going to double bottom or triple bottom. I thought it was going to... So, this decision was made on, on the um, four-hour chart. This kind of goes into why I actually set up my dashboard like this. I always have like the larger time frames here and the shorter ones here, and it's the same chart. But what I do is that, so for example, DAX, I said that I think it's going to sell off and um, and it's triple topped here. So that kind of falls, in, so that's good. And then if I do Fibonacci from that like here to, let's say here, if you do Fibonacci from here to here, uh, then you can see that when it came back down, it came back down to the 61% level and then it's rejected and it's coming back down again. So this is all I saw in the four hour charts. You see how I, how I broke it down on the, on the four hour chart. And then I go down into that, let's say the 10 minute chart or the 15 minute chart, something like that. And that's where I start plotting way more lines just to perfect perfect my entry. So if I was really smart <laughs> or if I would noticed what I noticed now, I would have probably taken a short here at this line because then I could be in a green position. So let me go down to like this 15 minute chart. So then I would try and take my short. Great, it's loaded. So then I would have taken my short position at, you see all the lines that I'm drawing on the short time frames. There's a lot of noise going on here. So that's what you have to really have a good understanding of what's going on on a, on a larger time frame before you want to go down to the 15 or 30 minute time frame because you might get scared by all of this craziness going on. But if you know what's going on on the bigger, broader time scale, then all this noise shouldn't really affect you so much because you know that in the bigger scale, it's, it's, it looks like a short. So I would then I would be like, okay, cool. So if it's caressing this line here, the 61% level, the, this somewhere like here, somewhere like here, somewhere like here would be the perfect place to take a short position. And that means you're mitigating how much um, risk you're taking because you can pretty much set your stop loss pretty tight. Now I wouldn't obviously set my stop loss here just in case it does a little bit of retracement, maybe it goes to the 50% 50, 50 level, but at least you know your stop loss can be kind of tired maybe you want to put it here maybe you want to put it here but the likelihood of you going into the red is 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 much smaller because you've you've kind of analyzed the stock on the 15 minute chart on the four hour daily chart and then you've made your decisions of where to make your entry on the 15 minute chart if that makes sense guys so that's why i kind of use my use both the shorter time frames the 15 the 20 the 30 minute charts uh, for entry for perf to perfect my execution and the four hour and the daily charts to actually um do my main main level of analysis but yes in the short answer for you um g tub for what kind of name is that man <laughs> the, the short the the short answer is uh yes i've 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 been trying to um look at shorter time frames or sh hold my positions for shorter times but um at the same time if i see something that that looks good i'm still going to enter it but i just i'm more careful in the way i um I'm not, I'm not as rigid. So, for example, for this one, if I said that I thought it was going to go all the way down here, I'm not going to, if it keeps selling off, I'm not going to be so strict as to, I'm not, I'm not going to wait till it gets there to take profits. What I'll do is that I'll keep moving my stop loss and just let it run, let the trend run. And if it retraces back and then it hits my stop loss, then I'm in the green. I'm, I'm fine with that because I'm in the green rather than being stubborn. Like, I might, if I'm in the market with more predictable, I'll be stubborn and I'll let it retrace. And then I'll let it come back down again because I'm, I'm I think I'm pretty confident it's going to come back down. But now I just I kind of move my stop loss and then and lock in profits and then whatever happens after that if it re retraces back and for all I know it, it might do something like this it might come down come like up come down I won't allow it to go lose to lose all that profit I'll probably have set my stop loss here and if it retraces back I just time out because. I just need to lock in profits I, I'm I'm not in the position right now to I don't really want to rock the boat. Chat some keywords. <laughs> okay, that's where the name came out. Oh, fair play. Yeah, so that's that's kind of how I'm playing it. If that makes sense, guys. Um, let me know in the chat if that with what I'm saying makes sense about um the strategy I'm employing for for the current situation in the markets. Just locking in profits, being a bit more conservative in the way that not necessarily the trades that I make, but in the length that I hold the trades that I make. Um, and also um setting setting trailing stop losses or moving my stop loss minute. Um, not the minute, but once you're your your trade goes into the territory that you want it to and you're in the green move your stop loss past your entry point so that you can lock in some profits so that you can you can just let it run and just keep 
moving it as 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 the price trends and then if there's a reversal and it looks like it's going to be big just 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 let it hit your stop loss and take your profits that's how i've been tra uh, playing playing it anyway um so yeah i i got sidetracked now i was talking about gold yeah so basically yeah gold gold if i just look at it from here gold looks like it's, it's trending up and i think it's, it's it's reverted back to the correlation that it has with the equities market which is inversely correlated because i think Gold will continue trending up. Oh, I don't think it'll make the the type of move that it made on the twenty third and twenty fourth, where it spiked up by like, um, where's it? Where's my ruler tool? It spiked up here by like, uh, ten percent in two days. But I do believe it's gonna start trending up again. Uh, let's try let's try some Fibonacci. See if so kind of respects that fibonacci level is retraced but we'll, we'll have to wait and see what i think will happen i don't think it's going to be just a smooth sailing because it's moved up quite a lot i think it's going to come up to this line retest that line here maybe come back down again retest it again and then break through i don't think it's going to just go up straight away like that i think it's going to retest whatever line this is and then come shoot up so this is what I, this is kind of what i expect to happen um this um, but I'm just gonna keep my eye on gold and see how it how how it um, plays out. But that's that's the kind of motion I'm expecting from gold. Um, next, I'm looking at oil. Uh, you mentioned Fibonacci. Wait, you said you me I mentioned Fibonacci, etc. As indicators, do you have videos on the indicators and how you use them? Good question. The videos on indicators. Um, the indicators I use are MACD, RSI. Wait, I'll tell you the indicators I use are MACD. Uh, which is here RSI, which is here. I use Fibonacci extension and expansion and retracement. I actually haven't got a video. I've been meaning to make one. Thanks for reminding me. Um, I'll make one. Keep reminding me, and I'll make one um, about Fibonacci because I use it slightly different to other people. Uh, the, um, I've actually customized my one. The, the levels are still the same, but the way I use it is slightly different to other people. I customize it, and then I also add extra levels to show where it might go to next. So it, j it just doesn't show you where it's going to retrace, but it shows you the next couple of levels. Um, for Fibonacci, and I've also got my expan uh, Fibonacci um, expansion levels, which are which I do the same for as well. Where it shows you not shows you not only shows you the levels that it can retrace me, which, but also shows you the next two levels. But um, yeah, I'll I'll actually I'll make a video on it. You're right, I should make a video on Fibonacci. But I need to give you a caveat that the way I use it is slightly different to the way other people use it. Um, but it still it still makes me profits. Um, what do you think about EasyJet shorting? All right, EasyJet. Actually, I'll come back to EasyJet. Let me let me talk. Let me talk. Let me talk about um, luck and coffee. Let's 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 harken back to um, uh, Q4 2019. So basically, in Q4 2019, let's show you. In Q4 2019, um, I made a video myself and Infinite Investors. I'll show you. I'll, sh I'll tell you what I'm talking about. There's this video I have on my channel. Um, where myself and Infinite Investors both shorted Uber. Now we shorted Uber. Where is it? Both of us shorted Uber. And um, after that win, we were looking for other stocks to short. Um, and the reason why we shorted Uber was, was because they were in a lockup period. So a lockup period was where when when a company goes to IPO, when a company IPOs, they um, they have like a, cool, a lockup period where early investors have to get maintain their position for a certain amount of time in that stock before they can sell their position so that it just stops people from kind of just dumping all their shares in the market early investors from dumping their shares in the market and and deflate the depressing the value of the stock so um so where was that where was that uh, so when i made i made about two grand on that trade it was like one of the biggest trades i've made i, I kind of went all in i shorted uber and, and it was a very successful trade now off the back of that me and infant investors decided to look for some more trades similar to that so um where was it? Let me find. Yeah, me and Infinite Investors were trying to look for similar other trades similar to that. Where's that trade? Where's that? Yeah, so that it was that one. If you guys want to check it out, it's this trade of this video over here. Um, how I made seven thousand two hundred. I didn't make seven thousand two hundred. I made two thousand. Infinite Investors made five thousand. Put it together just to be a bit salacious, get the clicks. But um. Yeah, so I made two grand off of that, and then we, I started looking for other stocks to um, short based that way in the same situation where they're coming out of the lockup period, the financials didn't look too great, and most likely people are going to sell their shares. So enter stage left, luck and coffee. Now, I had my reservations about 
entry uh, entering a short on this stock because luck and coffee if you don't know luck and coffee is china's version of starbucks basically they just made their own version of starbucks now their financials there was nothing unbecoming on their financials everything looked pretty much in order they had a bit of debt but it wasn't too much an issue i looked at their s1 i didn't see anything there was no real red flags um if you want to check their s1 out just search luck and coffee s1 there was no real red flags so i thought hmm this but it still looks like a company that wasn't wasn't going to do great after the um the lockup expiration date but i didn't enter the short and the reason i didn't enter the short was because luck and coffee is backed by the chinese government and the chinese government they they have a mandate to always try and create their own version of america a successful american company and um luck and coffee was there to just basically replace starbucks because they didn't want starbucks they didn't want starbucks to be successful in china they wanted their own version the same way that china has the huawei to to compete with apple they always like to have their own version of a big um, u.s brand so that they can control it internally and that's what luck and coffee was and armed with that knowledge i knew that i thought okay if the chinese government are backing them that means that even if they don't want it to look like it's a failure. So they're going to pump money into this company and they're going to buy back stocks. They're going to do everything they can to make it look like a success. And lo and behold, after after the um, the lockup period ended, their share prices skyrocketed. And um, yeah, their share prices skyrocketed. And I was just like, why is their share price prices skyrocketing? They're not that great a company. They're not doing that well. Like, yeah, this was around November and the share prices skyrocketed and they just kept shifting up. And it was two months of just positive growth. 139% in two months. Ridiculous. <clears throat> and now, yesterday, their share price has tanked 80%. And they've just been on a down tra tra trajectory ever since. And uh, my, my theory was... Um, my theory was... Uh, what's the word? Justified. I felt vindicated. That's the word. Because... They, they apologized for alleged fraud. And I, I, I'm not going to say I knew this was the case because I had no uh, nothing to... Nothing, no proof of, of them misbehaving. But... I just knew that the backstory of the company led um, and the just narrative behind why they, 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 they came to be was because, and because they're Chinese, they're government backed. I just thought there's going to be some funny business um, with, the, with the finances. And even if they're doing badly, they're going to mask over it just so that it looks like they're doing well. Um, I just thought I'd give you a little interesting story about that. That's why you've got to be careful when it comes to um, government backed companies, Chinese government backed companies, because... They will cook the books if they have to, and I'm. And this is just a prime example of that. Um, but yeah, that was a little story I gave you about Lucky Coffee. And moving on, okay. So the next one is um, talking about EasyJet. Okay, EasyJet. Should I show Easy EasyJet? <clears throat> what what what's your reasoning behind shorting EasyJet? Obviously, all the um, airline companies are doing are doing really poorly because they're no one can no one can no one's taking flights right now. But um, my theory of shorting EasyJet is I'd I'd be careful on shorting EasyJet just because the airline companies most likely are going to get bailed out by the government, and if they get bailed out, the the share prices are gonna are gonna shoot up. So you have gotta be careful. Um, with I, I wouldn't I personally wouldn't short EasyJet just because um, there might be any any time now there might just be news that comes out that oh yeah the government are gonna bail out this company and that company and i believe the airline companies because they're central they're central um service the government can't just let them go bust because where are we gonna how are we gonna fly to how are we gonna get commercial flights so they might get bailed out and if they get bailed out it's gonna shoot up so yeah, I, I wouldn't short it because that news can come out anytime and then you just be blindsided and then your short position will just you'll just find the stocks like 15% up all of a sudden and you've taken a short position and then and you can just lose some money so that's why I personally want to short easy jet uh, in my opinion but if anything I would wait and if you if you hear if the news if news comes out about them being bailed out then maybe you want to take a long I don't know um, but yeah I wouldn't show it that's my opinion I just want to show it just because government bailouts are coming and most likely the airlines are going to get some bailout, bailout money um when do you, when you get the chance, can you f tell me your opinion on the long for HRL? Okay, HRL. RL. Hormel Foods. Okay, HRL Hormel Foods. Um, Hormel Foods. What does what does Hormel Foods do? Let me know in the comment section. Um, got gutterful. Um, what does Hormel Foods do? 
I'm guessing they're just like a, are they like Arla? Like, do they are they wholesale in distributor or what type of food company? Yeah, um, yeah, I'm gonna talk about oil in a second, and then actually, I've got that on my list. Um, so right now, I can see this line, so that's this is um, uh, this is a line of support, as you can see. Let's see if there's any other support lines. No, so they so you just sometimes gotta just play with the charts, uh, something like that, something like that. So, um I can understand. Okay, I understand why you think it's a long. I I do understand why you think it's long. I need to know about a bit more about this company before I'd want to take a long because I'm I'm just scared to take a long on anything given the current situation in the market. Maybe the the um the industry they're in or the sect the the services they provide they actually benefit from um the current situation in the markets with this pandemic. So if that's the case, then maybe I would take a long. But let me know what do they actually do. Um, got a fool. Tell me what they do. Um. Stacks, what are you doing? You're late, man. <laughs> um, yeah, if you can let me know what they do, then I can, I could, I could say yes. But like, in, personally, I think it looks like a long just based off of the technicals because it's like an ascending channel pattern. I'll make, I'll make this dotted, actually. So it's an ascending channel pattern that's retested the resistance line one, two, three times in 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 recent, and that's that's always a sign that there's a potential breakout in play. If you, if you, because it looks like it's just been ebbing and flowing, ebbing and flowing, ebbing and flowing, came back down and it came up sharply, came down, came up again, and it looks like it's retested this line because it wants to break out. So I understand why you're long on it, but yeah, so straight, just based off the of technicals, yeah, I would think it was a long because, but um, I'm, I need to know a bit more about the background of the company. Um, but just straight off technicals, yeah, I think it's a long. And what I would do, the way I'd play this is that. If I was to take a long in this, I would, I'd set an alert on this line, set an alert on this line. And then once it breaks that line, I would take a half, half my position I'd put here. I let it go up, let it come back down and I take my other half here and then, and then let it go up again. And that's that, that's the way I can I protect myself. So I take half position there because if it goes up and it gets rejected and it breaks down, then and then it just sells off then at least you only took half position and, and i'd set my stop loss around um i'll show you i set my stop loss like around here so my stop loss will be there and i'll enter half my position here let it go up there and when it comes down here if it breaks and then it goes that down then it just hits your stop loss then you've only lost a little bit but then if it, if it rebounds and comes back up then i'll take my other half here and then just and then as i said as it starts climbing just keep moving your stop loss until your stop loss goes past your entry point and then just keep riding it. So that's how I would play it. Um, yes, stacks. Um, you Okay, now to talk about oil. I hope that was useful on HRL. Actually, I'm going to add this to my uh, watch list just to see how, how it goes. Um, yeah, that was a good stock. Nice one. Um, stacks, you want to talk about CEY? What's that? Cent uh, Centimino, right? Yeah, Centimino. Yeah. Um, Sentiment, sentiment. After this one, I'll, I'll go into oil. Sentiment is. Sentiment has been weathering the storm pretty well. That doesn't make sense. I swear I had lines drawn on this already. Mm. So it looks like an expanding wedge. Uh, I actually made a video expanding wedge. Check that out if you want to know how to trade expanding wedges. But um, the textbook theory of expanding wedges are that the what you need to look at when it comes to expanding wedges are how it entered the expanding wedge. So it entered from like a sell off. Entered from a sell off. It entered from a sell off here, and then it ricocheted up down up down up down so what i need it to do is that it needs to the way you enter either a long or short and expanding wedge what you need to do is that yeah oh it's a gold stock ah okay that makes sense yeah okay it's a gold miner stock so it's basically going to do whatever gold does not whatever gold does but that news that i mentioned at the beginning might be to to the benefit so now i've got a bit of a long bias now that i know it's gold stock like it 
what you need to do is that is you need to wait for it to retest this resistance line and then what it's going to do is that it's going to come back down but it's only going to come back down that like halfway and once it comes back down that like halfway it'll go up probably break out go like that and go like that so you can do a couple of things once it goes down halfway you want to enter a, you can enter a long here and then let it ride let it break out and then you move your stop loss and then you enter and or you can enter your long here here or here i'd enter my long positions and then set my stop loss so if I enter my long here, I set my stop loss here. If I enter my long here, I set my stop loss here, and I just ride it. So yeah, that's 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 what I think is gonna happen because it looks like an expanding wedge for sentiment. Um, I, I've got a video on on expanding wedges. If you check my playlist, um, I'll show it to you. On my playlist, I've got a uh, actually video on chart patterns. And if you check this video here. Wait. So I've got like a whole series on chart patterns. Look at that handsome devil. <laughs> like, uh, where, uh, where's it? Uh, where's it? Broadening the expanding wedges. Yeah. Anyway, check check that playlist, and you'll see my videos on on how to trade all these different chart patterns. Um, I go through pretty much. I think I've gone through every every one of them. But yeah, this is my this is the one I got on expanding wedges, and I just explained to you the strategy I use. So, see, that's what I'm talking about here, where it kind of it will go halfway and that's your confirmation once it goes halfway but anyway i'm not talking about that now on to the next one now yeah okay so it's a packaging bench oh they're they're a bunch of brands that apple gate and they pack and ship food okay so if they're shipping food maybe maybe they're, they're, they're doing so well now because now people are ordering food more so that's 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 a good reason <laughs> yeah shameless plug man of course gotta, gotta push the brand um yeah so on to oil next. So oil, I've talked about China, I've talked about Luckin' Coffee, I've talked about gold, and now to talk about oil. Now, if you checked out my last video, another shameless plug, sorry guys. If you checked out my last video that I made on... Um... Hi guys, in this video, I'm gonna be talking Oops. to you about how to make profit trading the cup and handle chart pattern. Let's get exists. straight into this. That exists. Okay, so if you... If you check out my last video about um no, my last two videos on oil here so i've done one here on oil one here again i'm probably gonna make another one because in in my last video oil went up like by 40 percent okay let me let me go back to this so oil crude oil this is a lot of technicals involved in this a lot of technicals involved in this so crude oil the story so far is that crude oil was sitting around sitting pretty here between the 50 and 60 level and then it tanked and it sold off to about the $20 per barrel level. I went, I gave a whole explanation as to why it went down to $20 per barrel. But basically, it's a bit of like a Saudi Saudi, Saudi Arabia want to have, have cut their oil productions because they can be profitable selling oil at a lower price point than, than Russia and Iran and even the US. So they're trying to basically produce oil at a low price so it screws up the US shale economy who produce oil at $40 per barrel to make a profit, and um, even just Russia is to screw over Russia as well. They're, they're basically trying to screw over the competitors. It's a bit like owning a, um, a a corner shop and then a little opens next door and then just undercuts your prices so you can go out of business. That's basically what's happening. So Saudi are trying to do that. Uh, over the weekend, Donald Trump said that, well, last week, around Friday, Donald Trump said that he was going to... Um, he, he was brokering a meeting between Russia and uh, Saudi Arabia so that they could actually... Uh, agree on, on on a decent oil price rather than twenty dollars, and I was a bit skeptical as to if if uh, Trump was actually going to be able to broker that deal because one, Trump's full of hot air. He likes to make up stuff, and he'll say anything he needs to say to rally the markets. Two, I don't see why Saudi Arabia would come to that table. It's in their interest to continue keeping the price low and and screwing over the other countries because then they can uh, control the market a little bit more. And three is that it's in it's in America's interest for oil prices to go up. If you're just looking at it straight from a game theory perspective, what does Saudi have to gain from from going back to the table right now? They've got they've got everyone by the balls. They've got Russia by the balls. They've got USA by the balls. So I don't see why they would come back to the table. And so um, that's why I was a bit skeptical when Trump said that he was gonna he's broken the meeting because I think he was just trying to get the oil prices to rally up again. And um, and if if I've said this before, if news comes out and it causes the market to rally, 
if that news isn't actually implemented and it's just news, then people, then the share price, the market will just tank again. Because if you hear something's going to happen and then everyone piles in on stock and then they find out later, ah, oh, no, it's not going to happen. It's going to come back down again. So I think that's what's going to happen come Monday. It rallied off the news that Trump was going to um, broker a deal between Saudi Arabia and Russia. Now we're, we're finding out that it might not happen. It's going to come back down again. So that's why fundamentals are important with something like oil because there's so much geopolitical stuff that, that dictates how oil moves that you can't just look at technicals alone. Um, with that being said, there was this article I saw which kind of kind of buttressed my point. The point that I was making was that Trump makes up stuff. And it says, oil set to crater Monday as OPEC meeting delayed. So there was a meeting that was supposed to happen where Saudi and Russia were supposed to decide, okay, yeah, let's 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 stop this silliness and let's let's um let's decide on how we're gonna how much uh, oil to supply the market so that the prices can go up again. So oil set to crater, tension flares between Saudi and Russia. Um, yeah, I don't need to read the whole thing, but kind of just reiterates my point about oil. Um, so yeah, uh, my theory was well, not my theory. I think this is pretty looks like it's i reckon tonight i think it's around 11 tonight the markets go live again oil is going to tank it's always going to tank so um if you guys are interested look at that it's going to tank and i think it's going to retest that 20 dollar mark because that's the, the supply zone that was that supply zone that i had i had um marked up so uh i can see just it just retesting that 20 dollar zone so yeah, did you, should you price stay at the current price until there's the deal? Yeah, so basically, I, I don't think it's going to stay. Alan said, that should it stay at the current price? I don't know. I think it's going to come back down. Because the reason why I don't think it's going to stay at the current price is because this was all a byproduct of the assumption that a deal was going to happen. So if the deal is not going to happen, then it's going to go back to where it was before that assumption was made, or, or if not close to it. So speculation of news find out the news doesn't happen that's what's going to happen speculation of news find out news is not going to happen speculation of news it actually happens maybe it goes up or it, or it stays flat that's what always happens so you you start seeing this more and more the more you trade that speculation of news if it happens maybe it's been baked in and it stays flat or it carries on going up if the speculation of news doesn't happen then it comes back down so that's how I like to treat things. You always the speculation is one thing, but the actual implementation of what they said was going to happen dictates if it's going to stay at that level or go further up. And if it doesn't happen, it probably comes back down again. So yeah, that's that's how I um, play oil. Um, but yeah, so I've gone through gold, lucky and coffin, oil, and a couple of stocks. Um, I think we're at the thirty minute mark. So guys. It's been great. It's been real. It's any aka the not trader. Actually, before I go, if any of you don't have IG, I've got um I've got a referral link. So if you want to join IG, which is a trading platform I use, I use Pro Real Time via IG. Um, use my referral link. I do get a kickback, but come on, I give you a lot of free content, man. I give you a lot of free content. Do me a favor one time. If you haven't got IG, use my referral link to join IG. And if you use my referral link, as you can see in the ticker thing below. If you use my referral link and then you you can show proof that you use my referral link, I can, I'll do a one-on-one -on -one, um, session with you on uh, trading so I can give you some help on how, how to get started trading. But um, I'm sure most of you have a trading account anyway. But if you do use my referral link, let me know. I'll do a one-on-one -on -one session with you. But yeah, it's any aka the not trader signing out.